What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about a DeFi project that I think is one of the most exciting, undervalued, and overlooked DeFi projects right now. And that is multi chain, which is a bridge across a number of different chains. Before I go into the details on multi chain, what it does, and why I like it so much. I want to emphasize that nothing in this video is financial advice. You should still always do your own research of which this video can be an important part. I'll also say that although I like this project, I have not personally added this to my portfolio yet, although I am watching it for a chance to add it to my portfolio. Cool. So let's jump into what exactly multi-chain is. They describe themselves as a cross-chain router protocol and the ultimate router for Web 3.0. And this is also known as any swap. And if you've been using uh, various different chains for yield farming, there's a very strong chance you've used multi-chain before because many bridges, including the spooky swap bridge, for example, and many other smaller bridges you see, they actually don't build their own bridge a lot of times. A lot of times they'll use multi-chain on the back end, and then they just build a custom front end for multi-chain. And, um, and, and, and yeah, and, and that's pretty common. And, and and so what do I like about multi-chain? Because there are a lot of bridges. What, well, the thing is multi-chain is kind of the bridge. So they have over 1,500 tokens and they're on 32 chains right now. Uh, and if we just look at some of the supported chains, it includes almost everything you've heard of. Ethereum, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, Bitcoin, uh, Terra. Uh, and then it also includes some layer twos like Arbitrum, Phantom, uh, and then a number of other smaller chains that uh that you've probably used as well and and so so almost anywhere you want to go you can use multi-chain to get there and uh and so let's let's look at some other statistics now as well if we go to DeFi llama which is one of the best sites for researching DeFi projects we can see the total value locked across different things and if we go to the top projects across every chain so this includes ethereum includes everything curve is number one of course MakerDAO is up there. We, we see in the top 10 a lot of projects you've probably heard of. Aave, Hex, RatBTC, Anchor, Uniswap. And then look what else is there. Multi-chain with their multi-token with almost $8 billion locked in TVL. So so, so you, have, you have all these gargantuan projects here and then you have multi-chain. And you can see their market cap to TVL is, is pretty low right now. It's like 5%. Um, and, 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 you know, I don't know how much you should read into that compared to the other things because different types of projects will have different market cap to TVL ratios. That just gives you an idea of the sort of scope that multi-chain is, is uh, dealing with right now where they're in the top 10 of all projects for total value locked. And if we just look at their TVL, we can see it did peak a couple of weeks ago uh, and, and then it's resumed its uptrend since then. But but just in the past six months, it's it's really grown a lot. I mean, it's grown a lot even when the market was down because as more people bridge things across chain, more money flows into multi-chain. And we can see their trade volume has gone up significantly as well. This is a couple weeks old. This is an infographic they made, but so this is dollar values being dollar value of things being bridged. We can see that this, this is the uh, pink is the total volume. And we also have the monthly volume here. And uh, it hasn't quite gotten back to its October peak when the market was going nuts, but uh, it's almost there, even as things have been down. And and there's a lot of reasons to think that it will continue to grow because if you believe in a multi-chain future, if, if you believe that uh, that you know people are going to be using multiple different chains and and they're going to need to bridge between them, then they're going to need some sort of bridge to do that. And multi-chain is the bridge. And, and there are other bridges I like as well, like Synapse, Elk. But, uh, but, but multi-chain right now, if, just if you look at the numbers, is, uh, is dominating. And part of that is just because there's so many different places they can bridge to. This is another infographic just showing some of the chains that they're on and the protocols that on those chains. So they really are, are connecting, connecting the world of crypto and especially the world of EVM. So they're sort of the, as far as EVM bridges go, that, you know, multi-chain is totally dominating that space right now. Um, so some other stats on them, uh, their fees are, this is important. So 
over the past 30 days, they've brought in about $5 million in fees, and that'll be especially important in a second when we look at tokenomics. They've had a few hundred thousand users, 570,000 transactions. Um, you know, that's pretty significant. Actually, even 14,000 transactions is pretty huge. When you consider that uh, Ethereum, for example, does around a million transactions in a typical 24 hours. Um, so that means that they're doing almost 1% of the transactions of the entire Ethereum blockchain. And, uh, and, and that's pretty impressive for one protocol. Um, and then, of course, we, we looked at these other stats before as well. Total volume across all time, $56 billion. I mean, that is just enormous. Um, and, and, and yeah, and so, and so that's sort of in a nutshell, some of the hard figures on why I like multi-chain right now. Um, but, but I think their tokenomics are also intriguing as well. And this is part of the reason why I have been looking at it closer. So multi is their governance token. They have 100 million total of which about 18 to 19% are in circulating supply right now. And, uh, Eventually, what they're going to do in the near future, like probably within the next few weeks, is uh, they're going to change it into a V token, like V curve, where you can lock up multi for a certain period of time, and you'll receive V multi, and then you'll be able to spend that, or not spend that, you'll be able to lock, use that to earn a uh, portion of their fees. And uh, and like, like we saw a second ago, they're bringing in, bringing in a decent amount of fees, about $140,000 in the last 24 hours, $5 million in the last 30 days, and $23 million all time. And, uh, and, and you know, if, if this trend can continue, the trade volume can go up, then those fees are only going to go up, which means that, uh, that uh, you know, that $5 million in 30 days could turn into $10 million every 30 days. And those in a large chunk of those are going to go back to people who have locked the tokens. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very bullish as far as passive income and yield farming on those sorts of projects that pay out fees directly to users. And if I'm correct, the latest plan I've heard is for them to pay out those fees in USDC, which is also nice. So you're not, they're not doing buybacks or something like that. They're actually giving you hard currency in exchange for their token, for holding their token, which is nice. Um, uh, and, and then the price, we can see when they first announced they were doing a V model and switched to a new token, it really shot up to around $40, retraced by over 50%. And then uh, and, and then it's been slowly recovering since then and is around $25 as of the time I'm making this video. And so those are the positives, but I do always like to talk about the risks as well. Um, so, uh, you know, actually, actually, before I talk about the risks, uh, let's look a bit at sort of what those fees would be worth. So uh, like we said a second ago, there's about $5 million of transactions or fees in uh, in 30 days. So if you look at the cur current supply is about $18 million, that would be about $0.27 cents per token or just over 1% per month. So over the course of a year, you'd be looking at somewhere around 12 to 15%, which, which is decent and honestly for crypto is probably somewhat fairly priced. Uh, although if you consider the fact that those fees could go up, then then perhaps perhaps it would appreciate that way. Um, uh, however, if you uh, if you take the entire supply, which is 100 million, so this is where this is starting to get into the risks. If you look at 100 million, then it's only five cents per token per month, or about 0.2%. And, uh, and then if you look that out, look, if you multiply that out over the course of a year, you're looking at like two and a half percent, three percent. And that is, that is really not, not that great. And I don't think you can really evaluate crypto projects using traditional finance models. I, I just think it, it, it has more to do with buy and sell pressure, but you know, two to 3% is really not an enticing APR. Um, so, so I think now that, now that we're getting into the risks, uh, one of the risks is that if they give those rewards to everyone, including the tokens outside of circulating supply, like if they say that the team gets those rewards, then there's not going to be a ton of rewards for locked multi, assuming that most people lock theirs up, or at least a decent portion do. And, uh, and, and I think that that could potentially hurt the price, or at least make it not worthwhile for passive income. 
And another risk is that it was exploited recently, despite the fact that it's been audited three times. So, uh, so they were able to resolve the issue quickly, but, uh, but it was exploited and, and that is always a, always a major risk or, or always, always, always a major negative. And then, uh, and, and the other risk I see, and this is more fundamental to do with the entire model and bullish thesis on bridges is that as Ethereum layer twos rise, IBC connected chains and Cosmos rise and Polkadot and Avalanche, Polkadot parachains and Avalanche subnets get more traction then the need to actually bridge between all these different chains, you know, might not exist as much. Um, the past year, that's been kind of a given that you have all these different chains and people are moving between them. But I could easily imagine a scenario where maybe two or three winners sort of dominate. And and in that case, there might not, might actually be less bridging action um, to be determined. Maybe there'll be more if the entire space grows. But 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 I do think that's one risk you have to consider and you have to ask, whether whether there's still going to be so many chains around in a year whether it might be there might be only like three or four that people are really using and so that's that's the gist of multi-chain let me know in the comments what you guys think about it do you like this project have you decided to invest in it yourself and are there any other projects you want me to cover and if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and follow me on twitter link in the description and until next time this is dynamo DeFi.